play. This is the last of the how to play set two videos. And this is the one I was kind of not wanting to do. There's a lot going on with Zorga. Basically, the build can be whatever you want. And there's also a ton of different just lines of play you can do. Trying to go through and explain all of that on a like normal list is pretty daunting. So I got my friend K to send me the most beginner friendly build you can do. I'm using that build in this video. So follow him on Twitter. Big shout out to him for helping me with this. And then if you want to know more about Zorga, there is a player named Wolfen who is a basically Zorga one trick and he makes pretty good videos going way more in depth about a bunch of different just Zorga things you can do and he's way more qualified to talk about it than me I'm basically just making the video to finish out the series so yeah anyways enjoy Cardfight Vanguard Divines just released its second booster set in Illusionless Strife. In this series, I'll be going over all of the new decks that came out within this set. In this video, I'll be going over the last Faded One card, Faded One of Taboo, Zorga Nadir. Zorga Nadir is a new form of Zorga that lets you Alchemagic with bound cards instead of cards in drop zone, has scaling power for each order in your bind zone, and also has a divine skill to restand the column. Starting off with our main grade 3, it's Faded One of Taboo, Zorga Nadir. So whenever you would play a normal order, you could choose a normal order with a different name from your bind zone and alchemagic with it. If you are unaware what alchemagic is, it's basically combining both of the effects of the order. So you pay both costs and then you do the order you played from your hand first and then you use the second order's effect. It also has Act once per turn, Energy Blast 2, bind a normal order from your drop, choose up to two cards from your drop zone, and call them the rear guard. And they get plus 5k power until end of turn for each normal order with a different card name in your bind zone. And then at the end of that turn, you retire the called units. And then Zorga's Divine skill is whenever it attacks a grade 3 or greater unit, you can Soul Blast 1 and stand a rear guard column. And at the end of the turn, those rear guards retire. So Zorga Nadir is really strong. The change of Alchemagic being from bind zone instead of from drop makes it a lot easier to re use different orders also the power scaling does do a lot the longer the game goes which this deck can play a long game pretty well and then also having a one-time restand the column is really powerful with it with the new zorga we also got a new ride line with it that we are playing in the stack we are playing abyss fishing and split the preordained so when we ride over abyss fishing we soul blast one check top seven choose a unit in a normal order and you put the order in hand and discard the unit and then whenever you ride over split the preordained you choose a normal order from your drop and add it to hand so this ride line is really good because abyss fishing allows you to set up an order in your hand and also be able to find whatever unit you need in the drop zone in order to call out later a primary unit we're trying to get in the drop zone through this effect is abomination of impending karma abomination is really good it's a free way to get a two crit rear guard into play but also whenever you end up using the energy blast on it you accelerate your bind zone further and it also gets the power boost so abomination can very easily get to a very high number once we hit later in the game our other primary rear guard is shadow cloak and is what gives zorga as much utility as it has because it can basically tutor any order you need throughout the game but also because this deck has a lot of ways to revive their units you are able to realistically bounce anything you need from your drop zone back to your hand. So whenever you do Alchemagic, you finish out all of the order effects and then you can do Shadow Cloak. So Shadow Cloak can bounce things like Persona Rides or Perfect Guards or even just triggers to add back to your hand. And now the next bit is talk about some orders. A primary early game one is Mythiarch Habitat because it can check top seven and be able to call anything. So we're able to find whatever pieces we're needing. We have a lot more variety of what we can call off habitat because shadow cloak can also bounce that unit back to hand as well we are also playing overcoming the unnatural death so you want overcoming to be in your bind zone as fast as possible and then you want to alchemagic something with overcoming and then that order you played will also get bound which will then accelerate the power boost that zorga nadir and abomination will be able to gain one of the primary targets we will pretty consistently add back with overcoming is fine drink of abolishment for sins so this is really good because we will pretty frequently just take out all of our orders and put them in drop zone or bind zone so at some point this will be minimum 20k pretty fast and we'll just keep exponentially getting bigger the longer the game goes and because it draws a card you really just stop an attack for free 
And then the last order I want to talk about is Death Inviting Black Magic. So because we accelerate our bind pretty quickly, we can pretty consistently get this to like one, maybe two counterblasts. And being able to just counterblast one, draw two cards is really strong, especially when combined with another order on top of it. For our Regalus piece, we are playing Angel Ladder. Because it cycles itself and goes to Soul, which because of Shadow Cloak, this deck can go through Soul pretty quickly. It also gives 5k power to Zorga Nadir, who doesn't naturally gain power himself, unless if he calls a booster behind him. If you don't have Angel Ladder, Gratias Gradle is also a good option, but really just any Regalus piece is fine in here, because this deck can naturally search any of it out really easily. And then for our Over Trigger, we are playing Bless Favor. You can also play realistically any other Over Trigger in here if you don't own Bless Favor. For our Mulligan, our primary target is Shadow Cloak, because it's able to really tutor for any order we want, and a lot of the utility and versatility this deck has is through Shadow Cloak and how insane of a card it is. After that is Mythiarch Habitat because it can tutor out any of our other pieces and then we'll be able to have full access to all of it especially with Shadow Cloak being able to bounce it back. And then it's Abomination because you want to try to find one to put in the drop zone as quickly as possible. For our early game since we are not playing Roaming Prison Dragon in this specific build the early game of this build is a bit weaker than other Zorg and the Deer builds and in turn you basically just spend your early game just trying to find all of your pieces to have a good game later on. So you utilize Shadow Cloak to find the orders you're missing, you utilize Mythiarch Habitat to find whatever unit you need, and then Abyss Fishing for both of those. And then once you hit turn 3, you want to try to have at least one Abomination in your drop zone, and you utilize Zorga Nadir to either bind Mythiarch Habitat or Overcoming, or whatever order you actually have access to at this point. And usually you'll call the Effect Crit off of Zorga Nadir, because this deck can eat through Soul very quickly from Shadow Cloak, and through Abolishment for Sins. So having a free way to get extra soul is very strong in here. And then later on in the game is when you start really accelerating your bind zone through Overcoming and Zorga Nadir binding a bunch of your orders. And then you basically only use Zorga's Divine skill and Abomination's Angie Blast skill on the turn you think you're going to win. But very frequently with the combination of Zorga Nadir plus Abomination's power scaling, you can make a column that can restand from Zorga's Divine skill. 70 K plus, which is really powerful. And he was the deck list. And that is it. Big shout out to Kay for the deck list and the quick rundown of the deck. Please follow him on Twitter. And thank you for all the support for how to play set two. And I'll see you guys in set three. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. I'll see you guys in the next one.